Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God of Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today's video, as the title says, is another reading vlog for Tosca Lee, of course, and I'll be reading The Legend of Sheba, Rise of a Queen, and I'm so excited. So this was a book Tosca actually sent to me after I did a post on Instagram. And um, this book as well is signed. So now I have two signed books from her. I literally just finished Hava um, about a day ago. I, I finished it on the 3rd of August. Today is actually the 5th. So I decided not to read anything on the 4th. But I did go with her novella which I will talk about but um yeah I am diving into this book this will be a three-day read and um a lot of people are always asking me about these like tabs and why I do that and how I do it um in short I will explain basically what I do is I take the total number of pages in the book and divide that by however many days I want to read the book so normally I stick to three days reading a book um sometimes four or five depending on the length of the book this book is only a total of like 316 pages so I could read this in basically if I think three days that's about 100 pages a day pretty much so I then divide that by three and then that's how I get my three days one two and three Hopefully that helps. I will do a more in-depth video on that um, probably for September's TBR because I'm probably going to have more books for September and I'll explain all of that there. But um, we are diving into this biblical fiction on the Queen of Sheba and I'm super, super excited. So before I dive into this, I do want to say um, I this is going to be my third novel from um, Tosca Lee, but my fourth read. I did read Iscariot earlier this year, which is her story on Judas gave that a four star i read the story of hava which i thoroughly thoroughly enjoy um i believe i gave that five stars if i'm not mistaken i gave that five stars and then i read the novella to this which is the prequel called ismini i think that's how you say that i, I read this gave it four stars it's pretty much a short story on the queen of sheba's mother and um the birth of the queen of sheba pretty much so now we're diving into this which is biblical fiction all about queen of sheba and king solomon and i'm super super excited we know i have a bad experience with the last book that i read i'm not even going to mention that book you guys if you if you've been following me you know there's a book i read about queen of sheba and i just i did not like it and i gave it 100 pages and i i dnf'd it um i don't know if i'm ever going to pick that book up or if i'm going to keep it and i feel bad about that book because i did request it from the publishing company but I had this one so i'm hoping this is at least a four or five star read so far i've really been enjoying tosca's writing um it's very little lyrical poetic and um descriptive which i enjoy and her characters are interesting um but yeah i'm gonna read the back of this to you guys real quick so it says it's the 10th century bc sheba's king is dead and bilkis his exiled daughter has gained the crown after a desperate overland march and battle for the capital now the new young queen must wage a cunning war to rule over the nobles who ushered her to the throne in their own bid for power Solomon, the brash king of Israel, famous for his wealth and wisdom, will not be denied the tribute of the world or the riches of Sheba. With the future of her nation at stake, the one woman who can match with Solomon undertakes the journey of a lifetime and a daring bid to save her kingdom. But neither ruler has anticipated the clash of agendas, gods, and the passion that threatens to ignite and ruin them both. An explosive retelling of the story of the legendary king and queen and the nations that shape history. So what I do know biblically of the Queen of Sheba is that um she's obviously from sheba she came um to israel to israel was it israel yeah israel uh whatever solomon's temple was that that's where she came um and they she bought i think it was gold and all that to him and she sought him out for wisdom and somehow some way they fell in love she got pregnant by him and then she went back home with the baby and i believe if i'm not mistaken the the child was a boy um that's the extent of what i know from scripture now the issue that I'm, I'm going to admit this issue right now before going into the story. In this book, she um, Tosca is calling her Bilkis. And in the last book that I read about the Queen of Sheba, the author used the same name, Bilkis. However, Bilkis for me is um, one of those touchy subjects because I have looked up the mythologies from different um, cultures, from Israel, from uh Persian and all like I've looked up the history of the name Bilquis and who she was in different mythologies and a lot of people in Christianity um, and Islam believe that the Queen of Sheba's name was Bilquis however with that name um, comes different thoughts about who she was some people assume that she was a jinn some people say she was half demon some people say she was a witch some people say she was goddess of love goddess of sex it's, it's, it's a lot with that name so when I did do the research um, 
it's now stuck in my head that Bilquis is a sex goddess and she's a goddess of love and that she is a jinn. It, it's, it's in my mind because this is what other cultures believe, but I know according to scripture, there's nothing about her being a demon or a witch in scripture. So going into this, I already have these uh, issues with that name, but I'm going to put that to the side and read this with a fresh mindset. Um, another thing is that Bilquis, according to other mythologies and um, ideas, she was like a half have a goat or something like that I, I don't remember it's, it's on the screen what kind of animal she was but she had like the legs of an animal and hooves on her feet like I don't understand how that's even possible that's why it's like I said mythologies and things like that um and then the last book that I read about the Queen of Sheba they literally mentioned her as having like animal legs and I just I didn't like that like I don't understand so I don't know how Tasso is gonna write this um I'm a little nervous because of my issue with the name Bilquis, only because, like I said, I have done my research on the mythology and the backgrounds for different cultures about Bilquis. And the Bible says nothing about the Queen of Sheba being a demon or a goddess or any of that. So that's where my issue might come in. But I'm going to go into this, like I said, with a clean slate. Hopefully this goes well. I'm hoping this is at least a four or five star read. So... I have this. I do have the audiobook uh, taken out through Hoopla through my local library. I do have two library cards, New York and New Jersey. Um, I prefer New York because New York has all the books that I ever need. Jersey is very lackluster, I guess you could say, when it comes to books. But um, using the Hoopla app, I did take out the audiobook for this. So I'm going to listen as I read. Um, yeah, I'm going to give it two chapters. So technically it's three because you're reading the prologue, the first and the second chapter. So I'm going to give it um those three chapters and then i'm gonna come back with my thoughts um to let you guys know i do need to read to chapter nine i think today yeah chapters one or prologue to chapter nine um so that's 110 pages so i'm gonna read a couple pages i'm gonna read 32 pages and then come back with my initial thoughts and uh yeah i'm like i said i'm going into this with a fresh mindset i did read the prequel novella about her mother and her birth so um i hope that helps me a little bit with understanding um but yeah i'm gonna dive in and i'll come back with my thoughts hey guys i don't know if this is like what's going on um my lighting might go in and out just because of how the, i have the camera positioned right now but um yeah so i just read the prologue chapters one and two and i am thoroughly 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 enjoying the writing i Pretty much can see that I really do like Tosca's style of writing and how descriptive she is and how she pulls you into the world and makes you feel connected to the characters. So I'm loving that because I've noticed even with reading Iscariot and Hava, I felt connected to the characters through her writing it. Um, so that's a plus. Also, I love the way she talks about black people's skin complexions. Like, I'm used to reading books where they describe black people as very basic things. Um, but her writing, she gives their skin, like, such this beauty. I have to, like, I'm, I'm just gonna read it. I'm gonna have to read it because I, every time I see her talk about skin complexion, I'm just like, yes. So, um, in reference to Ismini, um, uh, Bilkis' mother, she says, Bronze skin with brows like dove wings and lips for whispering prayers. My mother was the most exquisite thing in all of Saba. I love it. Um, then there is a part where they're talking about her relative and his children. And it says that um, his children received the royal darkness of their skin. Like, I've never heard brown skin, black people, skin complexions, skin tones described like that in books. And um, she writes it in such a poetic way that just makes me fall in love with her descriptions of black people. Just saying that because I know a lot of the times, um, when, like I said, when I read books about black characters, they're not descriptive. They're pretty much cinnamon caramel toffee type you know descriptions but hers she really has a poetic way about it so that's that's a plus for me i love it um but outside of that this book is phenomenal so i'm going to have to continuously compare this to the other book that i read and i'm going to show it to you guys i really don't want to but i have to for the purpose of this video because many people might not know what i'm talking about so i originally read this this is called the queen of sheba by roberta Keldor. kell's door now this book was written in originally in 1990 and then republished in 2013 so this is pretty much a very old book um i did read 
nine chapters so i read 98 pages of this book and completely dnf'd it because i did not write like the writing i did not like how they were talking about bilquis and who they made her out to be however <laughs> tasca has written bilquis to be such a strong young woman and um i'm not seeing any of those mythologies brought into this with her being um a demon or a sex goddess or a love goddess or anything like this um which i appreciate that i don't see that aspect of bilquis hopefully it stays like that because i don't want to read that about bilquis because it's not in my bible but um yeah so with the prologue you're pretty much just getting an understanding setting up for the story um and i love that chapter one you're basically getting some background on her mom now i did read the novella ismany you can see here it is free on um kindle still hopefully by the time this video goes up um i'll leave the kindle link down below for you guys but um basically that story basically tells the story of her mother her birth the birth of her mother and um the birth of the queen of sheba herself so um yeah, you get to see that the, the, the her, her mother and uh then her mother dies and all this takes place about when she's six years old now her father's second wife her name is Hagerlet. i don't like that woman her and her brother sadiq i don't like him at all Hagerlet is a twisted woman um she is definitely one of those women who's there who is there for the riches and the power and the glory she's not there for the love or the romance um she's very evil she's very just rude and i don't like her her brother sadiq they literally sub, sub, um, describe Sadiq as a serpent, and that is literally what he is for what he does. Now, trigger warning, this book talks about rape of a child who was about six years, no, eight years old, who's about eight years old. So, just understand that in this book, there is an eight-year-old being raped more than once. Um, it's not described in detail, which I can appreciate. Um, but just know that this does talk about rape and it does talk about the loss of children through miscarriages of, um, both Ismany as well as Hagerlet. But, um, I can't stand Sadiq. Sadiq and Hagerlet are on my do not like list. Like, I have a box with certain characters with certain stories that I just can't stand. Carpathia from Left Behind series. Um, ooh, what is that guy's name? Caiaphas from the Lion and the Butterfly series, I can't stand him. Um, Derek's brother from the Cities of Refuge series, I can't, like they're all in a box. And we're just gonna throw Hagalot and um, Sadiq in there, we're just gonna throw them in there. And this is a box where if in, you know, in some alternate world, if I could put them in a volcano, I would, um, because they, they make me despise them with a passion. So I have my reasons, you have to read the story. I don't wanna get too, like my videos are spoilery, but I'm trying to now curb them where there's not too much spoilers but i do like to like talk about the book so sorry but um yeah those two characters we don't like um i will say i'm loving bilkis she got some hands um i mean she's literally out here fighting little boys um there's a scene where uh after her mother died and her father gets a new wife um this little kid that she used to hang out with basically is rude to her and he says your mother is dead and hargalet is queen you're just a bastard now so it says I blinked in astonishment at the scorn on his round face and then I blackened his eye. She got hands and this is not the first time she hit a dude. So I love it. She's bold, she's sassy, and she stands up for what she believes and what she wants to do and I love that about her. She's not just this princess who wants to be pampered and um, treated with, like she just wants to be treated as a human. So I'm loving that. Again, we don't like Sadiq. I'm not even gonna talk about that. Sadiq is a, uh, Sadiq and Hargalette, whatever. Um, so at the age of 12, she is kicked out of her home. Um, she's kicked out and, and basically exiled to Punt. Um, that is the land of her father's mother. So her grandmother from my father's side, paternal grandmother. Um, and she lives there for about six years. Um, and then at the end of chapter two, she's about 18 years old when she finds out that her father is ill and pretty much on the verge of dying and that Hagalette is basically trying to steal the power and become ruler and queen over Saba and the, I guess those nations or whatever but her kinsmen don't want that they want her to now become queen so this is her journeying back now there is a cute little romance that i break my it breaks my heart for she has this romance in um punts with this guy named makar and um i like makar but i hate makar at the same time because of what happened with her finding out her father's death like He's involved in the scheme, but he really loves her. But now you can't really like him because he's part of the scheme and he knew about it for like two years. It's one of those. But they have this cute little lovey-dovey moment towards the end of chapter two. I'm just like, mm. so I'm just like, 
I like him, but I don't like him. But I'm like more so liking him than not liking him. It's confusing. You have to read the story. Just know I'm enjoying it so far. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely amazing. 32 pages. I really can't say a rating right now. If I had to say, this is looking to looking to be a four star. So I'm going to continue my reading all the way to page 110. I, of course, will have some montages of me reading. Probably when I get to chapter 8, I'll do a montage of me reading chapters 8 and 9. Um, the audiobook is perfection. Um, it's not like the Hava audiobook where it was skipping and changing out words. It literally just reads like this. So I'm loving that. And this book is good so far. So I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to read chapters 3 to 7 and come back on my thoughts. And then we're going to just get a little montage of me reading chapters 8 and 9. So yeah. Okay guys, so I finished reading. I'm a little late because when I started reading, it was like 11, 10 o'clock this morning. It's currently 5.33, so yeah. Um, I read the 110 pages and I must say I'm thoroughly enjoying the writing. Um, I'm definitely enjoying the characters. I'm loving Shiva, who is Bilkis. Bilkis? I think that's how I say it, Bilkis. Um, I'm enjoying her character. We're finally at the part now where she's hearing the story of King Solomon. Um, she has already sent gifts to him and Solomon sent gifts back to her. Sorry about the lighting. I'm going to just hold the book up so the lighting doesn't change. But um, yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, I mean, there's not really much else to say. The There was a war, not a war scene, but like a battle that I truly enjoyed. It was action-packed. I was here for the battle. But um, other than that, I'm feeling pretty good with this book. Um, I will say the audiobook is irritating me because it's on two times speed right now, but it's it feels like it's on one time speed, so whatever. But that is it for day one. Tomorrow is day two, so I will come back with my thoughts tomorrow. Hey guys, so it's supposed to be day two. I'm gonna let you know now this might be a four day reading vlog only because it's 3 39 p.m. on August 6th, and I have not read a thing. I am going to my son's father's house at about an hour and a half, two hours. So I had to shower, I had to feed myself, feed my son, clean up the house, wash my dishes, clean up my room. I still need to clean the bathroom before I leave. So I did not get anything done and I packed all of my bags. And normally when I go to his house, I'm leaving my house with like five bags minimum. My pocketbook, my laptop bag, and then I have my bag with my clothes and then I always have like two bags with worth of like books and then a bag with all my bible study stuff so yeah um so we'll see i'm gonna i'm not gonna do any montages and stuff while i'm at his house just because i don't feel comfortable doing that um it is his house but he does share the house with his brothers um his older brother and his younger brother um so i don't feel comfortable like recording like that too often um so i probably would just do clips of me telling you guys my thoughts if i do plan to read today um hopefully i can read in the car when he picks me up, I can like whip my book. Actually, let me take my book out, my purse. I'm gonna take this book out, my purse. So I have it here. I had it in my book bag, but um, I'm gonna take the book out, my purse, and put it in my take the book out, my book bag, and put it in my purse so that I can read in the car. Um, also my pens. I'm trying to grab that because I can stick this. I'm just taking the, the pins like this so I can just stick this whole thing in my purse as well. So I'm going to take these two and stick them in my purse right now. Um, I am rendering my annotating video. That video is like an hour and some change. It's a very long video, but um, it has all the information that needs to be there. I just need to do the blog post that correlates to that. And I also need to um, work on the newsletter for this week because I do have to send a newsletter out Saturday. So... I got a day to figure that out. I actually got to send the church newsletter out tomorrow, which I did not do. So I'm going to do that today. I think we have a meeting tonight. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. I think, yeah, VBS, our vacation Bible school for teens starts this week. So, yeah, I'm only going to his house until Saturday. So Thursday to Saturday because Sunday I do teach Sunday school. 
and I have not done my lesson plan. Like I have not studied the lesson plan and then I'm also teaching Vacation Bible School next Thursday and I have not prepared my lesson plan for that. However, the way God worked in my favor was amazing because both the lesson that I'm teaching this Sunday and the lesson I have to teach the teens on Thursday is literally the same topic of David and Goliath. So I'm I'm happy about that, but it's like, I ain't getting no studying done. I didn't get none of my references, nothing. So I have to do all that while I'm at his house, while spending time. Um, also, I like these nails a lot more now. Um, I put these nails on on August 1st. It is August 6th, um, and they're still pretty sturdy. I did use um, some Kiss 30 Second Nail Glue, I believe it was. Um, but they are the Kiss Gel Fantasy High Volume Gels. These are in the long length, but they're pretty much stilettos. They do come matte. I don't like matte nails. Um, if you want the number, there it is. That's the number. And that's how they look on the nail. They're completely matte. I don't do matte. So what I did was I put some of my mom's gel polish on top and used the UV light. You can see the mistakes close up. But um, they're really good. I did cut my nails off. Like y'all saw in my hobby vlog, I clipped my nails all the way off. And my nails are long. Or were long at least. I clipped them off because I just didn't care anymore. So, uh... Yeah, it's 3.42. We'll see what happens. Um, I should probably read while this video is editing, but I'm probably just going to watch some anime for the time being or some YouTube videos because I just, I don't want to do this right now. <laughs> I'm just like in relaxation mode and I have to make sure I get things done before Saturday because Saturday is my Sabbath and um, I don't like to do any work on Saturdays whatsoever for like anything, so Saturdays is literally like days where I'm supposed to be relaxing. I do make vlogs and I do make videos sometimes if it doesn't feel like work. Like if I do anything on a Saturday that feels like work, um, no, it's not gonna happen. I'm so tired. Oh, so yeah, I do have two pieces of chocolate right here. This is my favorite chocolate ever. Sea salt caramel milk chocolate from Ghirardelli. Ghirardelli? Is it Ghirardelli or Ghirardelli? I don't know. And this one is actually pretty darn good too. I also have my coffee. Yeah, yeah, I know I always got my coffee right here. So. And I use this mug or this cup because it's clear. I like the way it looks. So. I don't know. But, um. Hopefully these can last another week because tomorrow will make a week. So hopefully they can last another week or a week and a half. And then I'll put on the other pair that I got. I bought three boxes of these. Not the same like style, but from Kiss. And um, yeah, and then what I like is that you can either use the adhesive tape glue, like the little. Sorry, guys, Um, my mom had called. But um, what I like is that you can use the little adhesive on here, like. It has the actual like adhesive that you can do or the glue. I didn't use the glue that came in here though. I used actual Kiss glue. Um, and then I just put some gel, gel polish on top. Because I don't do matte nails. I, I've, I've tried the matte style. For some reason it doesn't work for me. I like glossy. Uh, so yeah. But what I'm going to try to do is read in the car. Um, so I do have my pens out to put in my purse as well as the book. I have the audiobook, of course. On. and I like I could definitely finish this book today if I just listen to the audiobook but for this I do want to annotate and stuff in because I've done that for all her books I do need to add my tabs in <laughs> I haven't but you guys can see like I've been annotate I haven't really been talking to the text but I have been marking up the book like right there so there are markings I just have no like real conversations with the book so um I'm thoroughly enjoying it though so we'll see to after I read the, the given pages I need to read today um we'll see if I'm like five or four we'll, we'll see but uh yeah I'm gonna go and if I do some reading I'll let you guys know hey guys so as you saw in that clip um I came home it is the 7th, right? Today's the 7th, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> um, I just got in the house. It's raining outside. My hair got partially wet, so yeah. But um, I didn't do any reading yesterday, like none. Um, so we're going to try and stay up all day. I have to do my lesson plan. I have to 
um well both my lesson plans so my sunday school lesson as well as my teens ministry lesson um and then i need to finish two books tonight so that is a plan for day this is day three of the reading block mind you and i'm still on like the second the middle portion of the book so i'm gonna read all that today um i'm first going to get myself comfortable and yeah i did come home um because it's just too much work that needs to get done i i pretty much knew that this weekend wasn't going to be the best and i probably should have just said i wasn't gonna go but i went for a night um tried to get some stuff done today it didn't pan out so i came home my finger hurts right now so yeah i'm gonna clean my room back up put my stuff back together probably make me a blue drink um and when i say blue drink i mean oh, i don't have any in there these little unicorn things from um let me open one ow let's hit myself on the chin these little thingies so i'm probably gonna make me one of these unicorn frappes um for this evening and the plan is to try to stay up we'll see how long i can stay up but um the goal is to complete those two books i'm gonna definitely start sheba first and then i'll probably read sheba do some studying finish it up and then read the other book but yeah i'll come back when i am situated and i get ready to read hey guys so it's 8 55 and um i'm sitting down eating i have my glasses off in a rag because the kitchen is smoky from when my mom was cooking so um the smoke has come basically throughout the house and it's making my eyes and everybody else's eyes watering so i had to get a cold rag um no joke no joke no joke oh god my eyes but um i figure since it's going on nine o'clock i can start reading the um oh that should work for now we'll just keep that there but um i figure since it's almost nine o'clock literally in like three minutes it's almost nine o'clock um i'm gonna start reading at least chapters 10 to chapter 21 so it's about 11 chapters that i need to read um of of course she, the legend of sheba while i finish up my dinner and then once i read those chapters i'm gonna get back into studying for sunday school now i have already written some things out for the lesson i wrote inside like here and things like that but because we're on zoom now i have to do powerpoint as well so i also have some written out notes that i need to finish writing out um, my bible has notes all in it i actually like wrote in the bible for psalms and first corinthians that correlates with the scripture so that needs to get done also found out that we're moving back to our 4 p.m services because other churches are opening back up so um, my church is going to go back to the 4 p.m services however we normally have sunday school at 11 30 because we have our services at 12 30 so now we have to figure out if we're going to do sunday school at three o'clock or if we're going to keep it to uh 11 30 so i was going to text my bishop today but i'm just going to text tomorrow because i'm like my brain and i'm tired and i really at least want to finish this book on today um i do like i said need to pick back up on storm rising but i may just finish this one today and then pick storm rising up tomorrow saturday that way sunday i'll have a saturday and sunday to read two more books before tone tapu um and i'm hoping to fit in the prophet um i'm really not feeling Lori and Lori Benton's um the the King's Mercy. I might save that for later on in the month because I'm I'm over it. <laughs> like I don't want to read it. But so far I have read um I think two of my reads for that and then Monday I also start um the third and final book in the Restoration Chronicles with my sis. So um that is the plan. So my eyes, I'm sorry guys, like my eyes are bothering me so much. I might make a run to Walmart because i need some soda i know the only soda i really drink is like ginger ale pretty much regular ginger ale the pink ginger ale because i don't know if it's like straw sure i think it's strawberry ginger ale um the dry grape ginger ale i like i don't like that blackberry ginger ale it's disgusting so i only drink those three ginger ales but i ran out of ginger ale like a week and a half ago so that's that um and if we do go i might i might try to see if i can find more of these like nails um 
in different colors or different shapes because i know they'll be cheaper at uh walmart but yeah so i know i'm rambling <laughs> my eyes are like bugging but i'm gonna listen to the audiobook but i'm also going to read along so you guys can see i have not added my tabs in i'm probably not going to throw my tabs in until the end um but yeah we're gonna get some reading so i'm going to listen to the audiobook while i read i mean while i eat um, but I am going to like follow along as I'm reading because I'm the audiobook irritates me It's great narration, but for me, I need the audios on 2.5 like three times speed It's on two times speed and it sounds like it's on one time speed to my ears and I don't like that because I'm literally reading three four pages quicker than a narration So and because I'm using the hoopla app hoopla only goes up to two times speed Libby has upgraded and now you can go to three times speed. I use Scribd, which also goes to three times speed. And then I use, um, what you call it? The, the little audiobook app on my phone and that audiobook app goes to three times speed. So, and even Audible. Audible, I think, goes up to like 3.5 or something like that. So, um, that's what's going to happen. I think I'm going to listen to the rest of Storm Rising via audiobook tomorrow, though. I don't know. We'll see. But um, I'm going to get back in. So I'm going to come to you guys when I'm done reading to um, chapter 21 with my thoughts. Once I get to chapter 21, I'm going to take a break. Probably either I'm going to finish studying or I'm going to watch an episode of an anime and then get back into reading. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll be back to you guys in like an hour. Hey guys, it's 10.19. Um, I'm really tired. I have like this large pimple right here on my forehead and it hurts. But the audiobook is killing me. Um, I think I'm going to scrap the audiobook and just read it myself without the audiobook. Like I'm reading with the audiobook right now and um, I'm only at page... 190 which is chapter 19 and i need to get to chapter 21 the audiobook i just i don't like it because two times speed sounds like one time speed and i don't like that um if i want it on like if i have it set for two times i need it to be a little faster and i'm reading it quicker but it's like drawing me out of the story so i'm actually going to completely stop listening to the audiobook because it's killing me like it's adding to my drowsiness um as far as the story i'm enjoying it um i was really loving like the first third the second third is more so her journey to king solomon and them writing letters back and forth to each other and then there's like an unnecessary romance that i feel like why um she has a romance with one of the traders that came to her trader like people that you trade with not a trader or but trader um I, I didn't get it i don't i don't like why out of all the people that she could have had a little fling with why him I, so that kind of like was like where did that come from because that literally came out of nowhere for me personally um but yeah at the end of chapter 18 they have made it to jerusalem solomon and her have finally met so hopefully it picks back up because right now i feel like it's like it's like the beginning is really good keeps you going the middle is like because it's that journey and it's not even like she's um a king so there or, or a warrior or something so there's not a lot of action it's literally her traveling from location to location to location talking about the cattle and talking about how the people use the, the females use urine to wash their hair which bleh, and how the men they make their camels vomit to mix the vomit inside of water to me i'm over it so now that we have finally met hopefully things pick up um because this middle portion is killing me <laughs> killing me uh i'm really really tired it's only 10 22 and i'm exhausted like mentally physically but i'm gonna try to finish this last portion here right here um so that's gonna be page 191 to what 219 so that's not a lot of pages i'm gonna try to read that and then i'm gonna reset my brain with some anime i'm literally on my computer now looking for an anime to watch 
because I, I know I cannot. I was going to grab my Bible. My Bible and stuff is on my bed. I was going to grab that. I've been doing Bible study all day since this morning. And I'm drained at this point. <laughs> and it's not like it's personal Bible study. It's actually Bible study for a lesson, like two lessons. So I'm drained. I'm, I'm exhausted. I don't want to do it anymore. I can edit a video. Don't feel like editing a video. So I'm going to watch anime. Either one or two episodes. And depending on how I feel after that, I'm going to finish up this book. Hopefully. Like I said, it's 1023. I probably won't finish this book till about 1 a.m., 2 a.m.-ish. Um, about that time, I don't know if I'm going to stay up or not. I feel like I should just stay up and do like a 24-hour reading type of thing. I don't know. I'm tired, y'all. But this book, this this is not even the book. Like I said, it's not the book that's killing me. It's the audiobook that is killing me. And I have listened to a good amount of audiobooks and I've never felt drained. Like I listened to Sherlock Holmes on audiobook. Enjoyed it. I'm currently listening to Sentence of Stability, an audiobook. Enjoying it. But the audiobook for this is just it's not doing it for me. Um now maybe it's because I'm listening to the audiobook through Hoopla and I can't make it on three times speed because i feel like if it was on if i was able to do three times speed i'll be fine it'll keep me awake and i listen to three times speed because it keeps my mind going as i'm reading if that makes sense but she reading too slow too slow like i don't even i don't even want to know what it sounds like on one time speed because i know if this sounds like it's slow to me then i know one time speed is super slow so i'm gonna finish reading these last few uh chapters 19 20 so three chapters ago 19 20 21 yeah three chapters left so i'm gonna do that chapter 21 and um it's still not that interesting right now they have just met um and pretty much solomon is ignoring her but only because he has to tend to his other wife um because he has a new wife apparently uh i did get to see nama and the pharaoh's daughter who in this book she has a name with the t it's on the screen and then nama of course we already know who she is she was mentioned as one of the wives of um solomon but uh it's okay the second like i said there's a little portion is like that journey and i feel like it would be different if it was like a male character because with male characters in their journeys there's always a lot of action and um it's not to say that a woman's journey can't have action but in biblical fiction i don't see that happening um because it's written in biblical times and women weren't really the ones doing the journey so mm. um so if i had to like debate of a rating so far i would say four stars um i still love the writing very descriptive i like how she explains um the different villages and towns she's visiting the the smells that um Bilkis is <laughs> the sense that Bilkis is smelling um the way the sky and everything like I'm loving that imagery it's really pulling me in and um as a lover of writing I used to love writing a lot in school that is pulling at my heart but my eyes are a little heavy but that's okay I'm trying to hold out and not make coffee um if I do get coffee it'll probably be um uh, instant coffee but um I did read that portion so I literally only have this last hundred pages to go so i'm going to quickly watch probably two episodes of this anime 10 45 i have three episodes left so we'll see i'm gonna watch an episode see how i feel after that and then 
pick back up and finish the legend of sheba like i said it probably won't be done till about one two o'clock um it's 10 46 right now so i will most likely finish this i'm gonna try to finish it by midnight i'm gonna try so i'm gonna watch one episode and dive back in but um hopefully the last portion i feel like this like the meeting is now going to be weird between them um I'm not really sure where Tasca's gonna go with this right now, so I don't know. I don't know. Definitely, like I said, it's sitting at a four star, so we'll see if it bumps up to a 4.5 or 5. Um, as far as her books I've read so far, definitely Hava's number one and then Judas. Um, I'm not sure if The Legend of Sheba is gonna go before Judas or be like my third favorite from her, but um. Yeah. The writing is definitely like if I could rate it if I could rate this on the writing alone, five stars. But I also have to, you know, keep in mind of my engagement, my enjoyment, the intrigue, the plot, the characters. And I was enjoying Bilkis at the beginning. This middle portion I'm just like, eh, like <laughs> cause she's just she's doing the most for me right now. And it's not like I'm I'm not mad, but I'm, I'm like irritated with her for some odd reason. So I don't know where the irritation came from. I'm just like irritated with her character. So <laughs> that's a thing. But um, I think that's it. I am going to look to download Demon today so that I can read that because I do want to read Demon. Um, I probably, I don't know if I'll read it this month or maybe in um, September we shall see but i think i'm done for now so i'll holler at y'all a few um like i said the plan regardless is to finish this book today regardless but um yes yeah, so i'm gonna go take a break i'm gonna refill my cup because i ran out of juice so i'm gonna put this book to the side watch your anime and come back to you guys in either 30 minutes or an hour okay guys it's 11.55 and I finished reading I really don't know what I'm gonna give it right now um, I'm really unsure like I said that first third really gripped me and then the second third was a journey and then that final third was overly poetic <laughs> with um, how Solomon and Sheba were conversing so I'm really stuck at what to get this. So I'm about to use the call pal system, which is a seven tier rating system. So in my head, I'm thinking a four, but we'll see. It might be like a four, it might be like a 4.5. I don't know. Um, so I'm not going to walk you guys through this as I am doing the rating uh, because I don't know what to give this as much as I enjoyed the writing of the story like the writing alone like i said is a five star but my interest in like the plot pretty much doled out so um i finished of course today great done but um let me just pull this out so it's august this is the legend oh she going through the characters um the rating system is like a one to ten ten being the best one being the lowest i was really intrigued but i'm going to say my interest in characters is a seven um i really really loved focus at the beginning but as the story went along i just didn't care um not that like i said it was something about her that irritated me i still don't know what it was <laughs> but her as like a character a person not the writing okay um, the writing gets a solid 10 for me like the writing was on point um the atmosphere definitely gonna give that an eight um i felt like i was there but not fully um definitely different from when she did let me see yeah hava i gave hava a complete 10 as far as like the atmosphere for this 
I didn't feel completely there, but I did feel the atmosphere with how she was writing the scent and um, how things looked in describing fabrics. So that's an 8. Um, writing is a straight 10. I like the writing. The plot. I mean... <laughs> I'm gonna give the plot an 8. Because, like, I wasn't, like, sold on the plot. And then, like, I get that the plot was, you know, the Queen of Sheba meeting Solomon and them two coming together, getting married, having a son, and her taking her son back to her land, um, and as well taking God, but eight, my intrigue, I'm gonna say it's a seven, um, logic, was there any illogical, yeah, th there was, a, th that romance, I didn't understand with Tamarin, I felt like that was just, boop. so, <laughs> we're gonna go with a seven, um, my enjoyment a seven so this is a 7.71 it says four so let me see yeah so it's a low four so it's a four stars um 7.71 would be like a 4.25 so i'm gonna just say four stars so this Toscali, the legend of shiba is a four star like i said i was hoping that it was at least a four and it definitely is a four i have read like i said two others i've read one other which was um, Queen of Sheba by Roberta Keldors. We know I gave that a hard DNF. I'm not going to finish it. I probably would just not ever pick it back up. And then I forgot I did read another story of Sheba. Um, but it was like, uh, the bind up, uh, the heart of a king by Joe Eileen Smith. The Queen of Sheba was in that story. And I actually enjoyed Sheba in that book as well. I totally forgot about that until I saw Nama's name mentioned. Um, I didn't add my tabs. I do need to add my tabs, but I'm probably not going to work on that right now. It's 11.59. So, I'm done. I'm not even going to grab my Bible. <laughs> my brain is not here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch one more anime and get my butt in the bed. Because I'm tired. I'm I, I tired. I'll probably eat, like, another piece of chocolate first. <laughs> but I have completed reading this in the amount of days that I, well, not in the full three days. But this is a three-day reading vlog. Um, I didn't read one the sixth but i did complete the seventh so i read the fifth and the seventh completely through and i'm um, definitely a four star read i definitely would recommend it um because the the writing is very poetic especially since this is solomon we're talking about solomon was very poetic um but sometimes i felt like it was like overly poetic but again that's pretty much who solomon was he pretty much wrote poetry but um i love the description of black people in here we love i stand um, especially since I read a lot of fictional books that don't really talk about black people, black characters. And if they do, it's very like vague, tar, chocolate, brown. Eh, this was a lot more descriptive and I like books that do that. And I wish I would see more of that in biblical fiction, especially since we know, you know, they were black. So I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, didn't love it. But I enjoyed it, but that's okay because I did love Hava. So, um, as far as pitting this against Iscariot, I don't. Mm. This would probably be my third. So, it definitely will be Hava, Iscariot, um, and then the Legend of Sheba. And I say that because Iscariot really had me in my feels. Like, it was emotional. It made me cry and angry. This, for some reason, Dokus irritated me. <laughs> she irritated me. She was very much whiny. That's that's what it was. She was so whiny. Like, I get that she had that situation with uh, Sadiq and the situation with Makar. Um, but then she just swore off all men. And then you had this, like, weird relationship with Tamron. But then you tried to reject Solomon. And then you went with Solomon only to get your people's... <laughs> <laughs> she frustrated me <laughs> she frustrated me but i enjoyed it so that is it with this reading vlog i'm not sure what the next book i'm going to do for the reading vlog is going to be i have to figure that out i probably should do the, a reading vlog for um on this foundation but i'm probably not so i don't know i don't know but i'm gonna go it's 12 2 i'm gonna go to sleep now so I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching, rating, commenting, subscribing, and all that great stuff. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.